Five Chinese provinces sending medical teams to help combat the virus cluster in Beijing, one of the biggest hospitals in the capital now equipped with a virus testing department. Chinese authorities are claiming the CCP virus is under control, but one funeral home in Beijing has reportedly been cremating corpses under strict virus protection measures. With the continuous rainfall in China, an expert warns that one of the world's largest dams sitting above the Yangtze River is at risk of collapse, possibly impacting over 400 million people downstream. U.S. customs officials in California are warning that prohibited meat from China could contaminate U.S. livestock. And the leader of the GOP's China task force is considering a new move to counter China's propaganda by forming a special working group that was once deployed during the Cold War era. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. So far this month, Chinese authorities have not reported any CCP virus-related death anywhere in the country. But at least one Beijing funeral home appears to be burning the corpses of virus patients. One Beijing citizen told U.S.-based Chinese radio company Sound of Hope that he knows someone who works at a funeral home in Beijing. According to him, the facility is cremating bodies daily under strict protective measures. Due to the sensitivity of this issue and to protect the interviewee's identity, we're using his last name only. The corpse were burnt in a special stove. Two men dressed in full protective gear are appointed to handle these kind of corpse. Beijing citizen Mr. Hao says he doubts that the epidemic has calmed for even a single day in China since its start. He found it strange that almost overnight, China's epidemic level virus numbers dropped to almost nothing. The Chinese Communist Party stopped reporting cases to make the situation look stable. Now they see that other countries are still reporting cases. People began to question why the epidemic is only under control in China. Why not in other countries? So Chinese authorities decided to report a few of them, too. Now we turn to China's medical workers. Last week, we reported that a medical team from another province traveled to Beijing to help treat the city's virus cluster. Now five provinces, including the city of Wuhan, the origin of the CCP virus, have sent medical teams to Beijing. Chinese authorities invited eight of Beijing's hospitals to host a talk about combating the pandemic. A makeshift virus testing department has been built in one of Beijing's biggest hospitals. The city has also ordered all nursing homes to stop accepting new residents. Likewise, visits from the outside are prohibited. At the start of this year, eight Chinese doctors posted information about Wuhan's virus patients on social media. They were later labeled rumor spreaders and silenced by Chinese authorities. Among them was whistleblower Dr. Li Wenliang. But later, as the virus situation worsened, everything the doctors warned against was proven to be true. A similar situation may be happening once again in Beijing. The city's police have detained 10 people in recent days because they were posting virus information online that doesn't fit into the official narrative. Beijing's police have investigated 60 cases. One person got criminal detention and nine people got administrative detention. So what did these people post online? One of them posted that 400,000 people in China have died from the CCP virus. Another user wrote that thousands of people in Beijing have tested positive in recent days. And another said thousands of Beijing citizens were killed by the virus. Back to Dr. Li Wenliang. Although he passed away back in February, netizens haven't forgotten about him. Comments on his last Weibo post recently exceeded one million. His last post has since turned into a Chinese wailing wall of sorts, similar to the wall in Jerusalem where people have written prayers. But last week, all comments attached to the post were deleted. Protests from netizens erupted online and the deleted comments later reappeared. But the top comments haven't been recovered. In response, Weibo said the problem was a technical issue and that nothing was deleted on purpose. The suppression of free speech in Wuhan appears to still be going strong. The arrest of citizen reporter Zhang Zhen was authorized this weekend. She's the fourth reporter to be arrested for reporting the truth about the virus situation in Wuhan. Authorities justify it by saying she stirs up trouble. 
Zhang worked in Shanghai as a human rights lawyer. After the CCP virus outbreak, she went to Wuhan to help report the truth of the situation via social media. She's been detained since May 14th. Before that, she was followed daily by police in plain clothes, and her phone was also monitored. Her lawyer's license has since been revoked. In September 2019, she was arrested for holding an umbrella printed with the words "End Socialism," terminate the Communist Party in support of Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement. Three recent studies shedding more light on the virus, its infectiousness, how long its antibodies last, and what kind of drugs are effective against it. A new virus mutation found in Beijing makes it even more infectious. The CDC has released the genome sequence data from Beijing's recent outbreak. The samples were collected from local confirmed cases and the surrounding environment. Data comparison shows all three sequences have the so-called D614G mutation. According to virologist William Hasselton, the mutation makes the virus about 10 times more infectious. People who have been infected with the CCP virus develop antibodies and can better fight the virus in the future. But a new study shows CCP virus antibodies only last two to three months. The researchers compared the antibody response of almost 40 asymptomatic patients in China with that of the same number of symptomatic patients. They found people without symptoms had weaker antibodies than those with symptoms. They also discovered that within two months, the antibodies of 40 percent of asymptomatic patients fell to undetectable levels, compared with 13 percent of symptomatic patients. Researchers from Oxford University say that one drug has been successful in saving some of the sickest CCP virus patients. It's called dexamethasone. Researchers claim that by taking it, death of patients on ventilators could be reduced by a third. For those on oxygen, it cuts death by a fifth. There's reportedly no benefit among patients who don't require respiratory support. The study has not yet been finished or peer-reviewed. Dexamethasone is usually used to treat conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and asthma. It's inexpensive and widely available. Torrential rains have been flooding most of China for weeks. The largest city in southwest China named Chongqing has issued an official warning. The city's hydrological monitoring station issued a code red flood warning just before noon on Monday. The alert warns of heavy rainfall. It states that the next eight hours will see super historic flooding and explained that it's said to be the biggest flood since 1940. The peak water level is expected to reach 36 feet. It's also the first time a code red alert has been issued since the station was established in 1940. Officials say 40,000 people have been evacuated. According to state-run broadcaster CCTV, eight children drowned in the river over the weekend. One of them reportedly fell in while others jumped in to help. All eight were swept away. Their bodies were found on Monday. Videos circulating on social media show streets that have become rivers, floodwaters pouring into houses, submerged cars and drenched parking lots. According to China's Ministry of Water Resources, close to 22 rivers in 16 provinces and districts have surpassed flood warning levels. Eight of them have overflowed, all with historic flood levels. Several areas have also been hit by landslides. One tunnel has been buried. That's as floodwaters in one county turn streets into fast-flowing rivers. Some of them now resemble waterfalls. China is renewing a yellow alert for heavy rainstorms today, as pouring rain continues to soak central and southern China. An expert warns that one of the world's largest dams, sitting above the Yangtze River, is at risk of collapse. NTD's Juliet Song has more. A branch of China's Yangtze River is bracing for the largest flood ever in 80 years. Authorities have evacuated 40,000 locals, issuing a yellow alert for rainstorms. As the rain continues pouring in southern China, an expert warns the Three Gorges Dam, one of the world's largest, is at risk of collapse. The dam is built above the Yangtze River and is situated in China's Hubei province. On Saturday, water inside the dam reservoir rose six feet above the warning level. Chinese authorities insist that the dam is structurally sound, but a famed hydrologist Wang Weiluo said that the dam is of poor quality and can't provide flood protection. Construction of the dam began 1994 and was completed in 2006. 
Wang said after a serious flood in 1998, the then Chinese premier hired Western experts to assess the quality control of the build. The experts said the steel bar welding of the dam didn't meet the standards. Chinese workers were unhappy and said the Western experts' criticism was racial discrimination. But the criticism came too late. The steel bar welding and cement pouring of the gorge's left bank is all complete. They can't redo it. The Three Gorges Dam didn't have a separate body for quality inspection. The team that designed and constructed the dam did it themselves. When the dam first began operations, state media made grand claims that the dam can withhold the worst flood in 10,000 years. Years later, they changed this claim to 1,000 years, then 100 years a year after, suggesting a decline in confidence in the dam. In 2010, state media quoted Chinese officials, stressing that people can't put all their hopes of flood control on the Three Gorges Dam. Last year, a group of before and after photos of the dam circulating online sparked concerns. The photos show in 28 the dam was a straight line, but the one in 2018 is slightly curved. Now the dam looks like this. Chinese authorities denied that the dam is deformed, claiming it's a satellite imaging issue. State experts later responded, saying the dam had moved a few millimeters, but within the normal safety range. Wang said before that the dam has moved due to its flawed design. He wrote in a 2019 article that the dam is composed of dozens of independent concrete blocks. These blocks are not connected to the bedrock below. They're just sitting on top of it. Wang said if the dam collapses, it will impact over 400 million people living downstream. Yangtze River's mid to low reaches are densely populated and include big cities like Shanghai and Wuhan. China state media maintains that the dam is not at risk of collapse, calling it rumors hyped by some Western media. Reporting by Huang Qing and Juliet Song, NTD News. Tensions are rising between China and Japan. That's after one Japanese city passed a bill to change the name of a remote group of islands to better assert its sovereignty. The area covers a group of disputed islands claimed by both China and Japan. The bill comes as Chinese Coast Guard vessels had been repeatedly intruding into Japanese-controlled waters near the disputed islands. China has since complained and has threatened retaliation against Japan. China is suspending imports from a U.S. meat plant after a virus outbreak hit the factory. The communist regime is now testing food imports for the virus after an outbreak at a Beijing food market. China is suspending poultry imports from a U.S. Tyson meat factory over virus concerns. The Chinese Customs Office made the decision after an Arkansas meat plant was exposed to the CCP virus. 3,700 employees were tested and nearly 500 tested positive. Most of them were asymptomatic. Tyson says they are working closely with U.S. authorities to ensure food safety. Its spokesman added that health organizations agree there is no evidence that the virus can transmit via food. China also suspended pork imports from a German factory following a virus outbreak there. China is getting stricter with their meat imports after an outbreak took place in one of their own food markets in Beijing last week. Since then, Beijing has been testing meat, seafood and fresh produce for the virus. Some ports were opening all meat containers to conduct the testing. Chinese Customs also started asking food exporters to sign a declaration that their produce is not contaminated by the virus. Imports of U.S. poultry have surged since China ended a nearly five-year ban on the trade late last year. Indian officials and locals call for boycotts on Chinese goods after Indian troops die in border clashes with Chinese soldiers. An Indian organization comprising of 60 million merchants are initiating a new movement to support Indian-made products. Indian politicians and civilians have started an effort to boycott Chinese-made products. That's after 20 Indian soldiers died during clashes with Chinese troops at a disputed border region. India's Cabinet Minister of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution appealed to India's people, asking them not to buy products made in China. He also directed officials in his ministry to stop purchasing stationery and other administrative items from China. India's Cabinet Minister of Social Justice and Empowerment also expressed support for the boycott on Twitter. The director of an Indian bicycle company pondered how he would once again start sourcing bike parts from India instead of from China. 
If we see our dependence on China, we only use steel nipples that we import from there. We used to use brass nipples and now we use stainless steel nipples. In bicycle manufacturing, only the steel nipples are imported from China. If India's boycott proceeds, many Indian manufacturers will consider similar changes. If the government is imposing restrictions on imports from China, if the Indian industry wants to, that stainless steel nipples can also be manufactured here. India has an over $50 billion trade deficit with China. New Delhi authorities plan to raise import tariffs on around 300 Chinese products. Further appeals to disengage with China economically have spread throughout India. Locals quickly responded to the appeals. Since mid-June, people have gathered on the streets to burn Chinese flags and photos of Chinese leader Xi Jinping. Some brought out their TV sets and computers that were made in China and destroyed them publicly. U.S. Customs officials are intercepting more and more prohibited meats from China. One seaport in California found nearly 10 tons in just two months. U.S. Customs officials in Los Angeles has intercepted nearly 20,000 pounds, or 10 tons, of prohibited meat products from China. It was seized over a period of two months, from early April to early June, before reaching American consumers. The meat products contained prohibited pork, beef, chicken, and duck. It was packaged in boxes with other consumer products, like kitchenware or headphones. U.S. Customs and Border Protection says it was a clear attempt to smuggle the meat. CBP official Mark Morgan said on Twitter, Great job by CBP Los Angeles, intercepting over 20,000 pounds of prohibited meats from China. We're keeping America safe. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says China is affected by African swine fever and several other diseases found in animals. African swine fever is lethal to pigs and wild boars, and it's highly contagious, but it's not dangerous to humans. The disease first hit China in 2018 and then spread to neighboring countries. China continues to battle against African swine flu with new cases reported in recent months. Pigs can get it from contact with food or clothing tainted with the disease. Because of this, U.S. Customs officials warn that prohibited meat shipments could contaminate U.S. livestock and cripple America's pork industry and its exports. The L.A. Long Beach seaport has intercepted 70 percent more prohibited meats from China this year compared to the same time last year. Huawei won't play any role in Canada's 5G network. Canadian company Telus chose Samsung over it last week. That means all three of Canada's biggest telecom companies will exclude Huawei. It's the latest setback for the Chinese company. The U.S., U.K., Canada, Australia, New Zealand and Japan have already banned or plan to ban Huawei from their networks. German Telecom accepted Huawei. France hasn't made a decision yet. A top Republican on the House Foreign Affairs Committee is considering tough tactics to counter China's propaganda campaign. It's a move that was used effectively by the U.S. against the Soviet Union during the Cold War. The leader of the GOP-led China task force is pushing to form a special group to counter Chinese regime propaganda. In an article published in The Hill, Congressman Michael McCall is calling to establish a State Department-led interagency group, saying he will soon introduce a bill about it. The idea is for a modern-day version of the Active Measures Working Group. The group was formed during the Cold War to counter aggressive Soviet Union propaganda, propaganda that claimed U.S. scientists developed the AIDS virus as part of biological weapons research. McCall said the U.S. right now is facing a similar situation. The Chinese Communist Party has actively launched a propaganda campaign against the U.S. China's foreign ministry spokesperson said on Twitter that the CCP virus originated from the U.S., hinting that the U.S. Army brought the virus to Wuhan. Twitter refused to take the post down, saying the misinformation does not violate its policies. The European Parliament says the EU should take China to the International Court of Justice. That's if Beijing imposes its national security law on Hong Kong. Lawmakers call the new law an assault on Hong Kong's autonomy. Here's Jane Wirrell with the story. The European Parliament on Friday condemned Beijing's so-called national security law for Hong Kong. Lawmakers passed a resolution protesting the law, saying it would undermine the city's freedoms. I defend the one country, two system principle. So I stand with the people of Hong Kong and support their freedom of expression. The arrests of pro-democratic leaders, the violent crackdown of protesters and the new security law 
or an assault on the autonomy of Hong Kong. In the text, members of European Parliament call on the EU and its member states to consider in the event the new security law is applied, filing a case before the International Court of Justice. The International Court of Justice is the highest United Nations legal body. It's based in The Hague. The group of seven foreign ministers on Wednesday said that the law does not conform to the legally binding Sino-British Joint Declaration, which was lodged in the UN. It is, after all, an international treaty lodged at the UN. Um, and that gives us the right, in fact, if we wish, to take any infringement of it to, to, the, to the Hague. Lawmakers also called for an independent investigation into the use of violence by Hong Kong police towards pro-democracy protesters. The resolution is not binding but can steer policy. It comes ahead of an EU-China summit next week. Jane Waro, NTD News. Phase two of reopening is now in full swing in New York City. Many popular businesses are feeling energetic about getting back to the hustle and bustle of serving their customers. New York City has officially entered phase two of its reopening. Reports of low virus numbers last week gave the city a green light to open and ease restrictions on many businesses. Non-essential businesses, including barbershops, salons and retail stores, are now allowed to open their doors to the public. New York City's mayor says this will play a vital role in the city's economic recovery. Look, phase one was a big deal, but phase two is really a giant step for this city. This is where most of our economy is. The reopening of businesses means the return of many jobs. With phase two, an estimate of 150,000 to 300,000 New Yorkers will be re-entering the workforce. It also means reclaiming a real core of the city's identity. The kinds of businesses opening in phase two, from restaurants to retail stores, are what really defines the city of New York. So the city is much closer in returning to its usual self now that these businesses are back in action. Restaurants, which were limited to doing takeout and delivery since lockdown, are now permitted to serve their customers outside. Restaurant owners say they're excited to get their businesses up and running. I mean, and it's very encouraging. A lot of people ringing to see we're open. They want, the customers want to get back. They, people want to get back to, New Yorkers want to get back to life and enjoying the city, you know. The city has provided restaurant owners applications for sidewalk space to accommodate more people. Four million face masks are also being given out to businesses, with over two million already distributed. And one of America's busiest airports, Los Angeles International, is testing thermal cameras to check passengers for fever in an attempt to bring people back to air travel. Los Angeles International Airport will install thermal cameras to check passengers for fever. This is in order to make air travel safe and get the airport busy again during the pandemic. L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti said the pilot program would identify travelers with body temperatures of 100 degrees or more, one of the leading symptoms that shows if someone is infected with a virus. If a person is identified as having elevated temperature, a staff member will approach the person and request a secondary screening of that individual using a trained medical professional who will have a handheld non-contact thermometer. LAX is one of the busiest airports in the world. Outside of the pandemic, it had nearly 90 million passengers per year. Thermal cameras were used in airports around the world during the SARS virus and swine flu outbreaks. The new technology will be tested at some parts of the airport before being applied to all terminals. And that will initially be at two different locations, here at Tom Bradley International Terminal, at the main entrance of the departure levels, as well as in the arrival area as well. Garcetti described LAX's measures as a voluntary program and said there would still be other methods used to ensure passenger safety. Spain is opening its borders to other European countries. Meanwhile, an outbreak in a German meat processing factory is raising concern the whole district could go under lockdown again. Spain opened its borders to most European countries and ended its state of emergency. Since mid-March, people had been confined to their own provinces to contain the spread of the virus. Now they can travel to other provinces again and meet up with friends and family. Some 1,300 households are under quarantine in a district of Germany. It's concerns growing that the whole district will have to return to lockdown after a huge outbreak in a meat processing factory where more than 1,300 workers tested positive. State officials forced 6,500 employees and their families to go into quarantine.
Protesters took to the streets of Sao Paulo to call for an end to virus restrictions. They showed support for President Jair Bolsonaro, who calls social distancing a job-killing measure more dangerous than the virus itself. Brazil surpassed 50,500 virus deaths and has more than one million infections. South Korean health authorities say the country is in the midst of a second wave of virus infections. The new wave most likely came from a holiday weekend in May. Korea's CDC previously said the country's first wave never really ended. Here at China In Focus, we dedicate ourselves to bringing you truthful, unbiased reporting. Don't forget to like and subscribe for the latest updates and see you tomorrow.